In this video I'm going to show you a very simple yet very useful test apparatus called a load lamp. In this case I will be using a 40 watt light bulb. You have the power cord feeding in and then over here is the neutral of the power cord. The hot flows into the base of the bulb and then the other side of the bulb goes to that switch. That's a momentary switch to this line post right here. That's a hot post. And now you're ready to use these two terminals for your testing. Now the reason why a load lamp testing apparatus like this comes in very handy is because you could test relays, transformers, switch mode power supplies, you could test just about anything and you're limiting the current because it's flowing through the filament in the lamp. You do not need any fuses, you will not have the need to replace fuses, so the current is limited by the light bulb. Now in this case it's a 40 watt light bulb the resistance is higher than this 100 watt light bulb which is around 10 ohms. Now in order to use the circuit you have to size the load lamp according to the load that's being tested. That could be anything you see here, a solenoid, transformers, relays, it could be a switch mode power supply, it could be a DVD, VCR, it could be any circuit you want to test and you want to make sure that you're not going to burn out the components in that circuit under test and you also want to make sure that you don't blow the fuses or anything else so that's why this comes in very handy so for example if this is a 15 watt transformer then you would want to use approximately a 40 watt light bulb which is that one right there now if you use too low of a wattage on the light bulb for this transformer here then what's going to happen you're not going to get an accurate gauge of the windings because what's going to happen, the bulb may come on dimly. Now if the bulb does come on dim, that's still a good sign that everything's okay. If the bulb comes on bright when you're testing the load, then what's going to happen, you're going to know you have a problem and you're definitely not going to want to plug this into 120 volts. So when the light is off or very, very dim, you're good to go. When the light is very bright or mostly lit, you could have a problem if you have the right load lamp in place. Now depending on the circuit you want to test, you could set it up any way you would like. I currently have it set up for 120 volts. You can use a circuit with 240 volts by replacing the lamp with a 240 volt bulb or you could place a couple of 120 volt light bulbs in series with each other. Now the circuit also would work well if you had a 12 volt circuit you wanted to test and you want to make sure you don't burn up that circuit that's under test, you could replace this bulb with a 12 volt automotive light bulb, screw it right into the socket, and then you could take this cord you see here, going to the power outlet, and you could just put alligator clamps on the end, and then you could take the alligator clamps and just clip it onto your 12 volt battery, and you're good to go for testing. So what I'm going to do now is demonstrate. Now there will be times when you have transformers like you see here, and you just don't know which is the primary and which is the secondary on the windings. Now a lot of the time on these smaller ones, it is the higher resistance winding, which is your primary, and the lower resistance winding is generally the secondary. But that's not always the case, so checking with your digital multimeter, measuring the ohms, will not always tell you the correct winding for the primary and the secondary. So what I'm going to do is I have a solenoid here. I have a couple of small power transformers that are unmarked. This one, two relay coils. Excuse my hand. I got bit by a wasp the other day, so it doesn't look too good. A little puffy. And I got this transformer right here. So we're going to test all these out. I'm going to show you exactly how this works and how you can make good use out of the circuit. So the first thing I'm going to do is this circuit is powered up. I'm going to take my digital multimeter and it's on AC volts. I'm going to connect it across the testing position that we will be using. All right, so we got one there and one there. Now this will be the hot wire heading to the load to be tested coming from the filament in the test lamp. So that will go there. 
and this other black wire will go to the neutral. So it's just a simple little circuit. I'll connect these together. It's no big deal. And when I push this, your light activates. So that's just a momentary switch just to test the circuit and you let go. So now I'm going to disconnect this. This is not hot right now. The switch has it off. Now let's just say you have this transformer right here and you have no clue which is the primary for 120 volts and which is the secondary. So what you're going to do is you're going to take one of these connections from the neutral and the red from the hot and you're going to connect it to each one of these wires. In this case there are three. There's a white and two blues. More than likely one of these is a center tap. So let me connect this up. Now that this is connected, I'm going to go over to the light. Now when I push this button, the light should not come on or come on extremely dim if you have the correct winding for 120 volts. And then you'll see the 120 volt reading across the load right here. And if it's in the wrong position, the light will come on fairly bright. And then you will see what the voltage is across that load. So let me push the button first right here. And as you can see, that's not good. That light should not be on. That's indicating a fairly low resistance connection on the transformer. And the voltage is showing around 16.6. Would indicate roughly that these set of wires, when you have 120 connected to another set of wires, would give you around 14 to 18 volts. So you do not want to apply 120 volts to this set of wires because you'll end up frying that whole winding out. So knowing that that's the wrong winding, we're going to take one of these off and go to the white, which is on the same set of windings of that. Repeat the test. Still no good. As you can see, we're showing 8 volts. So now we're obviously at the center tap of the wrong side of the transformer for 120 volts because that 8 was half of the 16. So I'm going to take this off and that off and now I'm going to go into these heavier wires you see here. Connect one to the white and let me connect one to the black. That's connected up. Let's go over here and push and the light is off. 123 volts Alright, that's perfect. That indicates you now have a connection here where you could feed 120 volts safely and you will not be burning up this winding. So you effectively identified this side of the winding as being the primary for your 120 volts. Now the reason why the lamp did not come on, the resistance of this bulb might be around 40 ohms but yet the resistance of this winding is probably a lot higher so the current can't flow through that lamp to illuminate it. That's why it remains off. Now the next thing I want to do is show you a relay here. These look exactly the same. Let me show you these two relays now. They're exactly the same. One is a 24 volt and one is a 110 volt. So I'm just going to play with one first and see what this does. We'll connect it up. Let's go to that side. All right, we're connected. Zero volts is across right here. The zero volts. I'm gonna push that down. You heard the click, and we're at 123. 123 volts across the relay coil. That's good. The light is off because the resistance in the relay coil was much higher, not allowing the current to flow through the bulb. Now I'm gonna take this off of here. These could all be tested with a 15 or a 25 watt light bulb because they're very small. I'm at the high end using a 40 watt. Let's try this now. Connect that across there. This one, we're going to push the button. That is not good. It's showing 60 volts across this connection right here. And the bulb is glowing because too much current is flowing through that relay. So you know you do not want to apply 120 volts to this relay. Now here is another transformer here. This was pulled out of a microwave oven. 
So you want to find out which is what on the windings. I'll connect it to here. We'll take a look. You can use the same low wattage bulb for this. Nothing going on. And we're showing 123. So we're actually on the right side of the winding to feed in the power. Let's take it to the other side now. Let's see what this is. That is not good. You're showing around 17.5. Now, what's interesting about this, if I use a lower wattage bulb, say instead of a 40, say a 25, then that reading you see here of 17.5 would be a little lower, maybe around 13 or 12. And that would be pretty much what the output voltage would be of this secondary winding if you were feeding in 120 volts on the primary side. So it's pretty interesting how this works, but it does work. Here is a solenoid. This is a 24 volt solenoid, I think, so let me just connect that up. This bulb is a little heavy again, the 40, didn't have a 25 around. Came on the dimmer, 54. So you know you're not going to want to feed 120 volts through this. So as you can see, there is a lot of use for this circuit. You could build a power supply and you could make sure that it's properly connected and there's nothing that's going to blow. By using a load lamp, you can limit the current flowing through the circuit, save yourself damage to components, and save yourself the cost of blowing fuses, which could become costly if you're constantly blowing the fuses. Let me switch to 100 just to show you something. All right, I'm going to show you what to expect if you don't size the load lamp properly. This is a 40 watt glue gun. Ideally, this bulb should be three times that amount. So this is a 100, it's a little small. What's going to happen as I apply power to the circuit, you'll see the voltage will start high on the meter and slowly drift downward. And the reason for that is because the filament in the bulb is heating up and as it heats up the resistance goes higher causing the voltage to go lower on the load. Here we go. On. Starting high and it's dropping down. Now this would still indicate a good item under test so you would not have any concern. It would still be working. But the bulb would glow dimly if you sized it too close. Now it also makes no difference of how this bulb is connected to your 120 volts. You can have it feed through the neutral side or you can have it feed through the hot side. As long as the load lamp is in series with the circuit under test, everything will be just fine. Just make sure the load lamp is sized around three times the load that you're testing and you should have no problems whatsoever. Thank you for watching this video. Please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs.